Hi there. So as we move more and more employees from the office to their homes, actually keeping our security up can be a bit of an issue because our what used to be a nice clearly defined network perimeter at our HQ or our branch offices is getting more porous. We've got users that are accessing our internal resources, maybe over VPN occasionally, but they're also maybe directly connecting to the internet when they're not connected to the VPN. So there's this additional porousness or Swiss cheese-ness uh, to our infrastructures and to our networks that could potentially be vectors uh, through which an attacker can get malicious code in or they can do other nonsense on our networks. So there's lots of different ways to mitigate that, to, to kind of cope with that, that kind of fuzzing of the perimeter. And one of them is in uh, by using DNS in kind of a creative way. And that's, that's what Cisco's umbrella is all about. So umbrella was originally called OpenDNS. It's still called that. But Cisco's kind of acquired OpenDNS and they made umbrella and then OpenDNS is also available. So umbrella is a offering from Cisco that allows you to filter DNS requests, monitor DNS requests for your organization. So it offers a lot and there's like many different ways to deploy it. You can just point your DNS servers at Umbrella. You can have an Umbrella virtual appliance, so-called VA, in your organization that integrates with Active Directory so you can associate DNS requests with individual users. Or you can use something like the roaming client, which is what I'm going to demonstrate, which which is a agent software that you install on endpoints when you don't really know what network they might be connecting to. You know, so with the roaming client, when you install it, it will the installer will associate that computer with your organization and then policies will be applied based on really how you want them to be applied or which users you want to apply them to. So it's pretty cool. You can filter on things like categories, like maybe certain categories of websites aren't appropriate for work, or maybe they're illegal, or they're otherwise something that you don't want users to be able to access from work resources. You can filter malware domains, potential malware domains, suspicious domains in general, uh, things that might be used for command and control traffic, you know, botnet hurting, uh, phishing, spam campaigns, and the list goes on and on. And there's also lots of monitoring and reporting built into that. So what Umbrella really does is it brings in Cisco's threat intelligence and security intelligence and allows us to take advantage of that at the DNS level. So when a client, when a host makes a DNS request and tries to resolve a potentially malicious domain name into an IP address, we can block that. And by blocking it, that client cannot communicate with that malicious IP address or that malicious server. And it actually is great for things like malware because it turns out that a lot of malware actually re relies on DNS. So it's not hard coded IP addresses in a lot of malware, it's actually DNS, like domain names. So if you can filter those DNS requests and prevent that malware from turning a, a particular domain name into an IP address, you can interfere with the malware and stop it from fully functioning or functioning at all. So uh, Umbrella is really creative and it's a great way to add security you know, regardless of your perimeter, you can add security to all the devices uh, in your network or that are associated with your network in some way. So the first step with Umbrella is to actually get your free trial. And to get a 14 day free trial, it's pretty easy, like no human interaction is required. You can just go to login.umbrella.com and click sign up for a free trial here and enter your information. You'll get a 14 day free trial. And Cisco's also taken Umbrella, and if you reach out to their sales department, you know, with this ongoing pandemic, if you reach out to their sales department, they'll actually extend your trial to 90 days. And this is something that might be really useful for organizations that kind of got blindsided and they're trying to move all their employees home while still maintaining some degree of security. Umbrella is kind of a simple, straightforward way to just add an extra obstacle that attackers would have to overcome to compromise resources, uh, company resources. So I've already requested my free trial. I'm just gonna log into the dashboard really quickly. You can kind of see here, we've got this message center, you know, certain, I guess, analytics or a dashboard or a pane of glass, whatever you wanna call it, where you can see the DNS requests over time. 
you know, which, which clients are active in the, the roaming case here. Of course, you can also specify networks. So maybe public IP addresses associated with your, your HQ or your branch offices. You can also do those virtual appliances I was talking about. But like I said, we're gonna focus on roaming clients and how do you actually get the roaming client up and running? Well, you wanna to go to, once you've got your free trial, go to deployments and then roaming computers. And you can download the roaming client right here. And this could be for Windows or for Mac OS, depending on what operating system you're using. Just download that and install it and you're done. Like no joke, you download that, install it, and it's got all your organizational identifiers in the installation package. So you don't have to do any configuration at all. You just download it to your Windows system uh, extract it to a folder. So here it is on the desktop and you just run the installer. So the setup.msi, just run it, click next three or four times and you're done because the actual identifying information is in this JSON file here and that will link that host to your organization. And then when you kind of go in and start looking at the hosts that are associated with this umbrella account, it, they'll be identified by the, the actual host name of that computer. So you can see here, we've got EMP1 laptop. And that is the, the computer that I set up for demonstration purposes that we were just looking at. So once again, really nothing much to do on the actual client side configuration, except just getting it installed, downloading that customized install package and getting it installed on Windows or Mac OS. So what can we actually do now that we've got this installed? Well, the first thing I wanna point out is when you install the roaming client, it can take 60 minutes or so for it to synchronize and actually appear here. And every time you update the policies as well, it can also take up to 60 minutes. So it's not immediate. It's not always immediate. So be warned that you could run into that issue. So what I did was I actually set up a policy uh, before this video started. So we've got this remote user policy right here that I already set up. There's a default policy that would be associated with it but I already set this remote user policy up and just basically applied it to this particular remote uh, desktop or remote laptop. So let me just show you, we'll just make a policy really quickly as a demonstration. And I just wanna show you like the, the steps here. So if you go to all policies here under uh, policies and management, notice that we've got two policies. I'm just gonna add one and we aren't gonna go crazy in depth here. I'm just gonna, not apply it to roaming computers. That's what you would do for roaming computers, right? You can click on roaming computers and specify which computer you're interested in, or you could just specify the entire group of roaming computers. Just depends on what you, uh, what you wanna do. At the same time, if you've got Active Directory integration, you could specify a particular Active Directory group. So you could click on that and it would be a link and then specify which groups you want to apply certain policies to. So we'll just say, you know, we'll just say all, mm, let's go to roaming computers and I'm actually going to apply this to a, a computer that no longer exists. So this employee one dash laptop, I kind of can reduce the size of the name, uh, but this is an old one that's no longer in commission. And you select, you know, what you want to apply the policy to and then you have a lot of options here. So limit content access, like based on content, you know, inspect files with uh, Cisco's AMP, their advanced malware protection, enforce security at the DNS layer. So that's like blocking command and control traffic, blocking malware domains and anything else that might be malicious. And you can imagine, like, as you can see here, you don't even have to imagine, there's lots more that you can do. But we're just gonna keep the defaults here really. And we have the option of maybe blocking certain uh, additional things. So uh, I actually modified the default to block newly seen domains, potentially harmful domains. So kind of sketchy ones, but we're not 100% sure that they're malicious as well as crypto mining domains. So you can either just change the default policy, which is what we did here with the default settings, or you can make a new set of settings, you know, and that might give you just a little bit more control for applying a certain type of policy and a certain set of settings to one group and a different one to another group. So we'll next through, we can specify what content we want to block. So all these different URLs are gonna be categorized by Cisco. And gambling, you know, there's, there's a ton of categories here. Some of them I can't really read off, but gambling, hate, games, whatever else, social networking, proxies and anonymizers, classifieds, right? We can block all those different categories of websites. And Cisco's got a pretty robust collection 
and uh, categorization of these websites. So if you block, for instance, classifieds, you could be pretty confident that most websites with classifieds are gonna be blocked. So we'll just leave this at high. And you can do additional things. You can block individual applications. So maybe we wanna block, uh, well, who knows, financial services, Zoho. For some reason, I wanna pick on Zoho. We could block them. You know, I've already blocked Yandex and Facebook. So we'll proceed there. And we can even make lists of individual domains that we either want to allow. So that could be, for instance, if there's a category of sites that you want to block overall, but you want to whitelist specific sites that are within that category, you could do that here by adding a list. We'll click next. We'll leave file inspection on. So that's using uh, advanced malware protection. So we'll click next again. And we can even specify what the page looks like when traffic is blocked. So I'm just gonna use the default appearance, but you know, in your organization, you might wanna have a custom uh, page that kind of has your particular uh, scolding message on it. So you could make a custom page. And then you give the policy a name. So I'll just call this policy two and we'll save it. And now we've got these two policies. So the remote user is the one that's actually applied to, to the whole set of um, roaming clients. And then policy two is applied to one client within that. And you can kind of change the order of these as necessary if you want to prioritize certain things. So I believe we could just drag this up just like that. And now this uh, remote user policy will be applied before policy two, which really won't ever be applied because it's just a subset. It's just applied to a subset of the identities in policy one, if that makes sense. And that's how you work with policies. Obviously that's a very quick kind of hand wavy summary of policies, but you kind of get the idea of the power here. By blocking DNS requests, you can regardless of whether your user is VPN'd in or whether they're accessing the internet from whatever network, coffee shop, probably not anytime soon, but could be a coffee shop at some point in the future, could be their home network. We can still enforce security policies by blocking or allowing DNS requests. Let me just show you really quickly what this will look like. So here we are, we're over on Kimu. This is a little Windows desktop running in uh, QEMU, I guess. I don't, I never know how to pronounce it. It's a Linux hypervisor and everything's working. Like I basically just opened up the task or, or um, the little tray here, double click on this blue circle, this globe, I guess it is. And you can see some information here, like the, the client name. So that's the name of this client system, organizational ID and so forth. And we can even see that DNS is protected and our DNS queries are being encrypted up to umbrella, which is always good. So let's, uh, let's get up to some hijinks here. What's a website that I could go to that's not too controversial, but would still be blocked. Uh, would Facebook be blocked? It should be. And while we're waiting on that, why don't we go to www.poker.com. I think that's a gambling website. I, I don't know, I'm not a gambler. Yeah, so here we go. This is the default block web page that you'll have with Umbrella unless you change it and, and kind of make it custom for your organization. So we see that this is blocked and it was blocked because it matched a particular category. And then over here on uh, Facebook, we get this certificate error. And that's because we are essentially being man in the middle by, uh, by OpenDNS. So we can't, I don't even see an option to, to force our way through this, interestingly. Yeah, I don't even see an option here in Edge to force our way to the website. But if we did, we would just see an OpenDNS block page because really that's what's happening here. Um, we may even, well, Let's see, I guess we, we uh, I don't really like Edge. Suffice it to say it's been blocked, right? We've, we've established that. So that's Umbrella. It's really just filtering what information gets to the, the client systems. And in a local area network or in your like office network, 
you could just point your DNS servers at Umbrella. But when you've got users that are roaming around from network to network, you could just install the roaming client and it will still monitor their activities, the DNS queries that they make, you know, which, which ones were blocked and it will still give you some pretty good information. So if we go back to, let's see here, where could we go? Maybe reporting and let's do security overview. And we can see, yep, we have these two blocked requests that just occurred. I think we can even click on that. Yeah. And <laughs> there might be a little bit of a delay time, you know, before things are actually shown up or maybe the time range is a bit off, but you know, you can drill down is what I'm getting at here into what requests have been made, whether they were allowed or blocked and, uh, and so forth. So I hope that's at least somewhat helpful. And I think it's a great way to, to supplement the security of basically any device that relies on DNS, which is more or less any device. And again, Cisco, you can get the 14 day trial basically immediately. And you can extend that to a 90 day trial if your organization is still trying to, to adapt to this kind of new reality, this hopefully temporary new reality that we find ourselves in. So I hope that's something that you find interesting that you will maybe get some use out of. And thank you very much for joining me.